Hey guys, it's Sandra from Inspired Keyboardist and today I'm really excited to show you something that I discovered from Abel Mendoza's Worship Essentials. So I was playing mainly pads for this particular worship set and I found that worship sound, which is the third patch from the entire bundle of Worship Essentials, I found that patch to be particularly just astounding. And um, in this video, I'm going to show you why I think so. So I've already mapped everything and um, it's already set up properly. This is the default sound of that worship sound. So you can hear that the default is that it's got this incredible echo. We can still hear a little bit of it. And uh, the sound is loud. So I want to show us how we can build it up slowly. So let's... Um, turn everything down first so that we can sort of play around with the growth of everything and uh, I'm gonna of course keep the master volume on and then the pulse goes down and pretty much I just want to introduce every layer I think what we should do all the time is to always turn everything down and just play around with it at home just explore the sounds first and then so that you can figure out how you can grow the sound the growth capabilities so of course if we just begin so what I have here is I've got just the piano, right? And um, I want you to know that you can even change the piano tone. So right now, if you look over here, you can change the piano tone. If it's really low, it's, it's almost muffled. You can hardly hear it. If you turn it up, it becomes very sharp very easy to hear, very piercing. And then the same goes for synth tone. So like synth tone is controlled right over here, but it actually adjusts everything that is synth. So for example, if I were to turn on my pad two, this sounds kind of like a distancy pad, but if I were to turn my mod wheel, it starts to sound very synthy. So now with my mod wheel turned up, I'm going to show you the difference between the synth tone at just about 9 o'clock and then I'm just going to increase the synth tone right so you can hear that the tone thing is a big deal so what else do I have over here okay I'm gonna turn everything down everything down everything down so I want to talk about piano verb so here I've got the piano only so it's really versatile as you can see that you don't have to exit this patch in the patch because it's so layered you can mute layers you can sneak the pads up whenever you want it right so the piano um, ver reverb is adjusted by the piano verb up here if I turn up the piano reverb it's nice and echoey and reverby and then, of course, I also want to introduce what um, the delays are. I think the delays are pretty cool. If you just turn on this delay, it's... You can hear that kind of a delay. And then, of course, we've got a different delay pattern if you turn on the delay too. So if you turn on both, then you're going to get an interesting, intricate kind of a delay effect. Right? And I love the fact that if you change your tempo, um, the delay also changes according to it. So it sounds really cool. It fits into the song very nicely. You won't get the situation where, oh, the delay clashes with the beat and stuff. And of course, the compressor, I've begun to realize, is extremely important because on top of maxing up the, the piano tone, if you want the piano to sound piercing, the compressor also makes it extremely piercing. So here I am at compressor at 9 o'clock. And if I turn up the compressor a lot more, and if I turn up the compressor to maximum, you don't actually want it to be that piercing as well so make some judgments about this I usually won't turn on the compressor so high but unless I really want to pierce through a lot of other instruments then I will so here's the best part I love how I'm just gonna turn everything else off I'm gonna show you all the pad stuff now so of course we've got two kinds of pads we've got this pad one which is oh sorry I think yeah it's better to just keep the modulation modulation wheel down first right it's your usual quiet worshipful sound and then of course we've got pat two which 
has like a slightly deeper and fuller sound. So can you imagine if you use both pads, you're gonna get Yeah, because you get the complement of the higher sounding pet one and the lower sounding pet two. So all together it just sounds really, really full. And then here's the fun part. If you roll out the modulation wheel, I love the fact that you can create a synth-like effect. So maybe for the verse, it's nice and quiet. You can go into a... And then when you're going to the pre-chorus, and then you start to hear more people playing Then you start to get into a very loud section, you can just sneak your bot wheel up. And then you can just max it out. becomes like a synth sound altogether, which I find very versatile because, yeah, you don't have to turn up a synth. But then if you want to punch more, then you have the option of another synth. So I'm just going to mute the pads, lower down the modulation wheel, you're going to hear the synth. So that's like really high and loud, right? So you've got the pads up, you've got the mod wheel jacked all the way up, and at a very loud section, you sneak up the synth, you've got three kinds of sounds going on only. nice and yeah and I don't even have to change any patch yet this is the only patch I'm using I'm just sneaking things around and just adjusting stuff right and then of course if you ever want to have more movement you can always check out the arpeggios I usually use them at sort of at mid volume so if I'm my song is like one two three four just tap the tempo two three four one two three four <laughs> Jack up arpeggio two. If I jack up both, okay, so I've kind of told you all the cool stuff that you can layer with all the arps and pads and mod wheel. Okay, so there's something else I want to talk about. I'm just going to make things a little bit subtle and quiet first. I love the shimmer pad. So the shimmer, the, the shimmer parameter is just fantastic because you can sort of make it sound very distancy just by turning this knob. So like, here's how it sounds with no shimmer. If I turn up the shimmer, you can hear this top treble line sounding very much clearly and then it's just really majestic a lot of songs use this a classic example of how this is used is like um, Everbee's chorus if you just listen to the first chorus it's just a shimmer pad and it's like so grand and majestic so Shimmer, perfect thing to play around with, especially when you're just doing a quiet pad um, and you can adjust it so it's not always the loudest. You can sneak it up halfway through the song. And now I'm gonna save the best for the last. I love the pulse. I'm gonna show you how the pulse works. So there's clearly a pulse thing here. If you don't, if you turn, don't turn it on, and I haven't turned it on yet, you just hear a normal kind of pad sound, right? Now here's what happens if you turn on the pulse. And I've already set the tempo just now, so... You can hear that. And um, it becomes like you are like your own DJ, right? So 
you could play around with that and I'm just going to play with a chord progression. I'm going to sneak up the modulation wheel as we go. the mod wheel going up creates this incredible dance beat and um, it's so cool and the whole thing's done just within one patch I haven't even changed to like the piano pad and strings and stuff um, I think the that worship sound is the most versatile I personally just I, I'll be very happy to use that because I could switch to piano I could just do piano and pad I could yeah, I mean, let's just do the typical meat and potatoes right now, if I, if, if you will. I'm just gonna, yep, just gonna turn on my pads only, turn down the synths, and uh, here we go. Really typical meat and potatoes. So sometimes I find that the pads are a little bit overwhelming, so I might just move the pads down to mid. So. If I ever feel like, oh, I think the piano sounds a little bit too piercing, just lower the piano tone. If I ever feel like, oh, I want it to be even more mellow, I can even lower the, the compressor's already down, but yeah, you could also, if you want the piano to go softer, you can just lower this piano volume as well. If you ever want the piano to start sounding a little bit kind of like in the background, you can even let lower the piano tone and it doesn't even sound like piano anymore right and that's that's the piano for you it's on maximum volume I've got the piano tone down to zero the compressor down to zero and it does not sound like piano So there you have it, that worship sound, it's versatile, you've got the quiet moments, you've got the meat and potatoes off piano and pad, you've got the synth dance thing, you've got the shimmer, you've got the delay, you've got the compressor, you've got the tone controls. I can just have so much fun with this in the whole worship set. Of course then, if you need other sounds that are not pad or piano or dance-like, if you want to create a different feel, like you need an organ, then you got to change your sound. But I love this. I think if you're pretty much doing a very simple kind of set or your instrument for the band happens to be just piano and pad mostly, probably some synths, um, this is a great choice. So yeah, I highly recommend Abel Mendoza's Worship Essentials and um, you can get it from the link below. So thanks so much for watching. I had a lot of fun presenting this. Trust me, you can ask my husband. I've been playing, I was just playing with this, like I can play it for ages because it's so fun. Um, if this video helped, just click the link below to let me know. And uh, I want to hear from you. Like, how do you find this? Do you personally use Mainstage or for um, do you use Mainstage uh, Worship Essentials by Abel Mendoza? you have any questions, just leave in the comments below. And hey, if you want to learn more about Worship Keyboard stuff, I've got free resources for you. You just have to subscribe to my email list. The links are at the bottom and um, you can access them all for free. So hey, it's been awesome just showing this around and I'm always thinking about what to teach in the next um, few videos. So feel free to tell me in the comments below as well and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!